<laughs> so a while ago, after having finished watching Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, I made a poll on my channel asking my subscribers what show they would like me to watch and possibly make videos on next. The choices were between Fargo, Gamora, Mad Men, Succession and Oz, all of which I plan to get to eventually. Oz came close in third place with 23% of votes, but Fargo and Mad Men were both equal at the top with 28% of votes each. I decided to go with Fargo as I just kinda had this idea based on the little I've heard of these shows that Mad Men is quite deep and requires a lot of thinking and reading between the lines, a la The Sopranos and The Wire. I wasn't quite ready to commit to something so heavy and long just yet, and knowing that Fargo was an anthology series, I figured I could maybe watch one or two seasons, watch something else, like maybe the first season of True Detective, and then drop back whenever I wanted. From what I understand, Fargo, which currently is set to have a release of its fifth season, is a show where every season is unconnected, containing different characters and occurring in different time periods, with minimal overlap, and contains a great season, a masterpiece, a good season, and a misfire. It is based on the film of the Coen brothers of the same name made in 1996, which from the films I've seen of the Coens is my favourite. The show contains much of the same spirit of the films, mimicking the use of quirky offbeat weirdo characters, absurd but realistic situations, ultra black comedy and a kind of mythical cautionary tale atmosphere, as if something supernatural is driving the events. Having the show be an anthology series with each season only loosely connected, mainly via the location and feel of the show, is a great idea I think. So you may be surprised to learn, I actually tried to watch Fargo many years ago when it first aired, just the first episode, and I absolutely hated it. So it started and there was an annoying CGI idea that popped up in the beginning. The fact that the characters were similar to the ones in the movie, but not quite, was annoying. It was annoyingly a very slow moving first episode, I couldn't tell if this was a series remake of the movie or telling its own story, which was annoying, and the show opened up with music that sounded like the fantastic score from the original movie but wasn't quite the same, annoyingly. The reality is, is that I was blinded by a preconceived hatred of the show, not giving it the time of the day in my mind and simply dismissing it because I hated the idea of popular movies being made into TV shows by creatively bankrupt filmmakers and showrunners. It was becoming the norm around this time and I felt really sour about someone taking one of my favourite movies of the 90s and making a show out of it, even though it's been endorsed by the Coens. And plus, it was cringeworthy for teenage me to experience second-hand embarrassment watching this absolute loser of a main character played by Martin Freeman walk around getting beaten up by life left, right and centre. Of course, now that I've seen it, that was the entire point in order to set up what happens later. I think I got as far as the scene where Lester drops his brother's gun in the garage and breaks it, about halfway through the first episode. I wasn't really engaged, I got pulled away from the TV and just never went back to the show. Had I watched the entire first episode, I would have most likely stuck with it given what happens in the second half of the episode. So fast forward about 8 years and here we are with Fargo being one of the most critically acclaimed shows around. Having finally given the first season its due, I can say that I had a really good time with it and this first story in the Fargo anthology gets a thumbs up from me. I enjoyed the low-key feel of the setting and the small town friendly vibe and atmosphere of the setting and how this was disrupted by the arrival of characters who seem like they're from different worlds completely. I liked a lot of the characters, especially Lauren Malvo played by Billy Bob Thornton. I enjoyed watching the plot unfold and it was interesting seeing where the story would take the characters and how everyone involved would end up. It was a solid show, any complaints I have are nitpicks really and aren't really worth getting into. It starts slow, the first few episodes are really establishing the setting, characters and kicking off the initial story with the climax of the first episode, but with the second half of the show the gears really start turning fast. It's directed and edited with confidence. The show isn't afraid to use audio cues to tell us important pieces of the story off screen, leave certain things open, up for you to decide and in general Though the story is relatively simple, it's nice that it doesn't spoon feed you. It gets creative with the way it films scenes that otherwise could feel ordinary, like the Fargo Massacre. 
I found the show funny, especially the dark humour, I was engaged, and I even found myself at times wound up and tense. There was a point early on where I was wondering where the narrative drive of the story was going to come from. Given the cops are looking to solve a murder, but we already know who did it, so there's no mystery. But it quickly becomes apparent that that isn't really the point of the story, and we start to see a certain character change, or maybe reveal his true self, depending on how you want to look at it, which starts to become one of the show's focal points, as well as the cops trying to piece things together. You know, I always think a movie or show is more engaging if it tells us everything about a scene, but removes one or two key pieces of information, which keeps us wanting to fill in the gaps and make our brains content to know the full context. This is a great trick that many films and shows use. Give us A, B and D to equal E, but leave out C. And Fargo is a show which utilises this a lot. What I mean to say is, Things like the opening scene of Malva driving his car and losing control, causing him to crash, and when he does, a man in his underwear pops out from the trunk and escapes. The scene is instantly interesting and delivers catharsis because of what you've just seen, knowing that the show will explain this scene soon and put it into context. A show obsessed with instantly gratifying us would have Malva on the phone in the car saying something like, yeah, I've got the target, he hasn't paid and I'm about to take him out, which would tell us straight away that he is some kind of debt collector or hitman and the scene straight away becomes less interesting because the intrigue is gone. Sometimes this can be taken too far in the other direction, like how I mentioned in reviews of Better Call Saul, that sometimes during the montages you have no idea what is going on or what the characters are planning, which also makes you lose engagement, but Fargo manages to get the balance right. So I haven't even mentioned the story. Spoilers for the first episode. So we have Lester, an insurance salesman who seems to be a failure in most aspects of his life. He is still being bullied by his high school bully. He is overshadowed by the success of his younger brother. His wife is disappointed in him to such an extent she says she thinks about other men while they're having a tryst. He's kind of weak, emasculated and snivelling, boxed in by the rules around him. You don't so much feel sorry for him as you do pity him and feel embarrassed on his behalf. Well, I mean, you do feel sorry for him to an extent, but then it's like the show punishes you for doing so. By chance, he meets Malva who puts ideas in his head about lawlessness and not playing by the rules. I have a few videos planned, but I want to take a closer look at Malva and Lester, so won't go into too much here, but in some ways the two men make for a good parallel of each other. First, I thought Malva was like an ultra-macho man to make a contrast for Lester, but it becomes apparent he's a completely different beast entirely. Anyway, later during a confrontation with his wife, Lester snaps, going at her with a hammer. He calls Malva for help, who arrives in time to blow away a cop with a shotgun, a good man, who arrived at Lester's house and found his dead wife. Malva disappears. Lester knows he's in too deep and intentionally injures himself so that the cops think some robber or someone came to his home and attacked him and his wife. And the story goes from there. So all in all, a solid entertaining slice of television and I look forward to seeing what else Fargo has in store.